I'm Riley of Canine Hybrid Creations, and I'm going to be demonstrating a new product that can be now found in my web store. This is a resin blank. It is a shell or a base for a mask that you can use to incorporate into your own creature costume projects. This is the canine model, so it would be ideal for a wolf or a dog-like creature and more species will be available in the future. I'm going to go over the basics of the design and talk about some of the unique features that can be found in the mask. This is completely hand sculpted by myself, made of mold from, and then cast in resin. Resin is a kind of plastic, so that makes it very hard and durable, but also very lightweight, which is ideal for creating a mask from. It's also great if you want to include a moving jaw into your character. Um, you can do this because there will be a mechanical hinge it also ensures that it's going to be very responsive and also very precise in how the jaws meet. On the front here, you'll see that the nose is fully textured and complete. This allows you to actually leave it in the final nose in your mask itself. You'll just need to paint it and seal it with a gloss. Um, but you're also welcome to remove the nose and replace it with something else. You'll notice that it was sculpted sort of raised from the rest of the mask. And that is because that when you put fur on top of the mask, you're actually going to be bulking it up a little bit. So when the fur lies against the nose, it'll actually be nice, flat, and streamlined. This feature is also included around the eyelids themselves. It's kind of has a little notch. You can kind of hide the fur in there to complete the look. And the eyelids themselves are meant to give a very neutral expression. And you can leave them in there and put resin eyes of your own but you are welcome to also remove the eyelids and sculpt your own expression if you want instead. This is a 4 centimeter resin eye and you'll be seeing out of the portion under the eye known as the tear duct but you can also remove the whole thing altogether and put a toony eye in there if you so desire. The overall uh, look of the mask was made to be a very generic canine uh, when sculpting it, I took in mind the fact that I wanted to accurately match a lot of the canine proportions, but many of them had to be changed when you increase the scale of the mask and also need to incorporate vision holes for your human eyes to see out of very easily. So considering that, um, the look was put a lot of effort into in order to make sure that it still looked very well balanced. It was also made to be a lot more on the streamlined side of things, so there isn't a lot of emphasis on some of the features. That is something that um, you actually have the option to customize yourself. For example, you can uh, put fur fabric over the structure as it is right now, and it will look great. But you also have the ability to create your own foam sculpture to bulk out the eyebrows, maybe change the shape of the muzzle, build out the cheeks, something that will individualize and personalize each character and each mask to look a little bit different if you want. The inside of the mask here, there is quite a lot of room. This is built on a 23 inch circumference head but it will incorporate something much larger or smaller. You'll just need to pad the inside appropriately to make it more comfortable and fit your head more precisely. One additional feature that I included on my masks. This is something that is very unique to my masks alone, is that I've actually sculpted it to incorporate the use of glasses. If you are a glasses wearer, you do not need to wear contacts in order to properly wear the mask. I have included some extra room in both the front and the width on the sides so you can wear a pair of glasses in the mask. Um, one thing though that is a little bit of downside with this is that your glasses do tend to fog up because there is a lot of heat buildup inside the mask. Therefore I recommend drilling out the nose holes and placing a small computer fan in the muzzle. This will help pull in some fresh air and circulate it out through the mouth and also out through the tear ducts. But if you still have a problem with fogging up, then you'll just need to take a break every 15 or 20 minutes, which is, in general, a good idea to do with when wearing a costume anyhow. So, it doesn't really matter what size of head you have or how big your glasses are. I have a big honkin' pair of glasses here. You can see how much more uh, room that this occupies in the space around my eyes. Not a problem, however, with this mask. I will now demonstrate. And uh, let's put my ears on for a good measure to kind of complete the look here. Fantastic.
Fantastic. As you can see, the jaw is very responsive. Um, however, I do not have uh, foam padding, which will be need to include it here. That will ensure that my bottom jaw connects with the uh, bottom jaw of the mask. And you can get uh, much more controlled feedback that way. So I have actually a lot of people asking me, well, how specifically does that moving jaw work? It's a very simple mechanism. In fact, you're going to be mimicking the mechanism that your real jaw already has, which is that there is a hinge or swivel point, and everything will rotate based on that point. That's exactly what you're doing here. So your chin will just simply rest on the edge of this uh, bottom jaw, and when you open your mouth, your jaw pushes the masked jaw open. In order to get that really snappy effect, you're going to have to incorporate a mechanism that helps bring that bottom jaw back up. And that's why I've included a piece of elastic in there, but you can also use a spring or something like that. And depending on the tension that you put in there will determine how snappy that jaw is. The jaw can actually be so snappy that it will be able to hold on to and grip onto objects pretty easily. What's also nice about this setup is that you're doing minimal work in that your jaw only pushes it open and it takes no effort to have the jaw close. Depending on the tension that you put in the um, elastic or spring will determine how much harder it is for you to push open that jaw, but it will also affect that snappiness kind of quality to it. So in a sense, you can actually make the jaw very customable, customizable and personal to your specific needs. The masks come in three different variations. This one is known as a uncut blank because this is exactly how it looks when it is pulled out of the mold. It may have um, some raw edges here, but you'll need to take a Dremel tool and cut out all of the pieces individually yourself. The uncut blank, though, is going to save you a little bit of money because you'll have to do all the work and not me. The uncut blank goes for $80 currently. The one I've been demonstrating here is an example of a cut and hinged blank. Cut is basically what it says. The nostrils, eye holes, and uh, moving jaw will all be cut out for you. That um, option will be $95. And if you want me to install this hinge for you, then that is going to be $105. And if you uh, choose to get a uncut blank or a cut blank, you can choose to purchase the hinge piece separately and that is going to run you for this style $6 and it does include that hardware so you can kind of put it together yourself if you'd like. If you have any specific questions about my blanks uh, feel free to leave it in a comment below or you're welcome to email me riley at caninehybrid.com but now if you'll excuse me I've got some more work to do. Catch you later.